up. Uh, we're going to call some people back up. We're going to we're going to keep Larry, who's still here, and we're also going to ask that Kathy and Kylie and Rob come back up. And we're going to introduce you to two more people: uh, Carlos Duarte, who was up here, except for uh, your our European contingent, and then also Monty Graham. And the, here's how the process is going to work. We hope. If we are collecting questions from you, uh, from a little slips of paper that you might have had, and if you don't have a little slip of paper to turn in and you'd like to ask a question, we have two people that are going to walk around with their uh, with our mobile mics, and we're going to hand you the mic when it comes time, and uh, we'll ask a question to that, and then you can either direct it to a specific person up here, or you can just kind of throw it out to the group and we'll let them scramble around and figure out which one is going to answer for it. Very competitive group, thank you. Does anyone have a question right off the bat? Yes. Go ahead, raise your hand. Before, uh, and again, we, we are more than happy. We, we can take questions in Spanish, we can give answers in Spanish. We, again, we can, uh, we can give answers in, in Japanese also. And we'll, we'll wing it on, on French and Portuguese, but we'll. Thanks, thanks, it's a good question. Um, so the, the, the type of jellyfish that sting are really, we're talking about the Nidarians, and that's something in the box jellyfish, and the, and the stingers you find on the beach here, the Portuguese man of war. And so all of those, uh, types of jellyfish have tentacles that hang from the bell, and on those tentacles are, are millions of tiny, tiny cells called nematocysts, which are actually stinging cells. They're actually like a harpoon, and inside those stinging cells are toxins. Many of them are actually extremely toxic because they can really harm us as, as humans. But what happens is, is that when you make contact with a, with a tentacle, it actually triggers millions of those stinging cells, the nematocysts, to fire and then injects like a harpoon all the toxin through the skin. And so that's how it gets the sting and that's why it hurts. We have one right up front. How deep did you go in the ocean? How's, the question was, how deep do you go in the ocean, right? How deep do they go in the ocean? Um, I think they, they go as deep. We've seen them as deep as we've gone yet in the ocean. Uh, so we think probably they live almost all the way down to the bottom of the ocean, which is about, at the deepest place, seven miles deep. Um, jellyfish can live in almost all parts of the ocean. Thank you. I can almost do it hysterical. Um, I'm interested in interspecies uh, interactions, uh, mainly from the point of view that underlying there's some communication we perhaps don't understand. One of the speakers mentioned earlier that small fish can save themselves from predators by getting in the um, entanglements of the jellyfish. Now my question is, do they instinctively know which jellyfish to choose uh, by some genetic memory? Or is it a Darwinian thing that only the ones that choose the jellyfish that don't kill them then survive? Okay, so there, there are lots of fish that, that effectively just hang around the jellyfish. And strangely enough, there's not been a huge amount of work done, but um, Often it's not that species selective, so often you'll get different types of fish associating with different types of jellyfish. And what we don't know yet is why the jellyfish don't get stung. And some of us, when I've been swimming around with jellyfish, um, the species I've been working on, the fish don't touch the tentacles. They actively avoid the tentacles. 
So it's quite an amazing feat of swimming. But in other cases, it may be that the mucus on the skin of the fish may protect them. So you're probably all familiar with Nemo, the anemone fish that hangs around with sea anemones. Well, those fish actually have, um, have protective chemicals within their mucus that helps protect them from the stinging cells in the anemone. And so the fish that hang around with jellyfish and jellyfish are related to anemones can probably have a similar sort of mechanism. Can I add to that just to bring back then? Just that in the deep sea, there's actually some of these big deep sea jellies that were in the video that we showed earlier, and they have a very specific, almost like a little co pilot fish that is a um, species that specifically hangs out on that jellyfish. So there are a few examples where there's fish that somehow in a vast ocean, especially in the deep sea, they can find their special mate of a different species. I could add one more to that. Uh, in, the, in addition to the fish, there are, there are crustaceans, small crustaceans that spend their whole life living on a particular type of jellyfish, and they ride around on them, and, and, and they use them as a sort of a nursery for their babies. So there's some very specific uh, co-evolved relationships involving jellyfish and other types of animals. Jellies that we see here that swim around and stay in this warm and bloom um, are usually seasonal. They'll, they'll come um, maybe in the springtime, feed, and then they reproduce and then they go away. Some of the, the deep sea animals and the very cold um, polar jellies, and there are jellies that live under the ice and, um, uh, in the Arctic Ocean, and those jellies might actually live for more than a year and, and probably do live for more than a year. So it just depends on how big you are, where you live, if you're in warm water or cold water. If you, you might live um, um, maybe several years. Okay, do we have a question back here? Do jellyfish have eyes and, or are they blind? And in general, where would they be? <laughs> okay, most. Jellyfish don't have true eyes, but they have um, sensors, sensory cells on their on their bells that let them know sort of um, roughly which direction they're going. But the uh, box jellyfish, I don't know if it's all the box, is it all the box jellyfish? Okay, the box jellyfish do have um, an eye that we might actually recognise. It has a lens like like we would have, and it's able to. Um, capture light and uh, form an image, um, and, and so there. Yes, the box jellyfish do have do have eyes, but they I think can only contrast between light and dark. That they can't they can't see colour as as we would be able to do. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll just say that they, the, the box jellies have four eyes. I think the really cool thing about a box jelly is that they're square shaped and it's almost like an elevator that can actually go look in all directions. So, yeah. One of the real paradoxes though is that to truly have vision you need a brain. Um, and so one of the things that we haven't solved yet is why have we got these really complex eyes in the box jellyfish when they don't have a brain to interpret some of the um, images that they're seeing. So that's sort of the question that people have been working on and we still haven't solved. Um, I had a 